In this tutorial, we'll understand camber as it pertains to bridge girders from a qualitative perspective. Let's begin with the definition of camber. For this, direct your attention on the visual on the left, where you see the elevation view of a girder and a horizontal datum line from which you can measure the vertical deflections of the CG of the girder. So camber would be the vertical deflection from curvature in the shape of the girder resulting from the manufacturing process. And the primary purpose of camber is to counteract downward deflections due to permanent loads. So let's assume the permanent loads are sitting as a uniformly distributed load on your girder, so they would impart a downward deflection. Camber is something that tends to offset those downward deflections. In other words, if you had produced your girder as a perfectly straight beam, then under the application of the permanent loads, your girder would go into a sag shape, which is not desirable. And that is a primary reason for camber in girders. And how is camber achieved? In the case of steel girders, this camber shape is fabricated directly into the shape of the steel girders. And we have excellent control over the camber values that we would like to achieve. However, in the case of pre-stress girders, it is the pre-stressing forces that result in camber and we don't have a high degree of control on these camber values. Let's review some of those details on the next slide. On this slide, uh, let's delve into some of the basic details regarding camber for both concrete and steel girders. Let's first focus on concrete girders. Of course, these are pre-stressed and that may include both uh, pre-tensioned and post-tensioned concrete girders. Let's begin with the visual on the bottom that shows a simply supported girder with pre-stressing closer to the bottom flange. Let's assume that your neutral axis is right here. And so this pre-stressing has a certain eccentricity. We know that it's going to produce a internal stress state that perhaps has much greater compression on the bottom and lesser compression on the top. You could also look at this as there being a net moment, a negative moment on this beam from the pre-stressing, which in this case, because the pre-stressing has a constant eccentricity over the entire length, it would be a constant negative moment over the entire girder. Now, in case you want to brush up your basics on pre-stressing, there is a tutorial out there on our YouTube channel, so please refer to that and that would help clarify some of those concepts related to the internal stress state produced by pre-stressing. Okay, so moving on, because of this, there would be a net upward deflection that this beam would experience, and that is what we refer to as camber. However, it is very difficult to predict this value on pre-stressed concrete girders. The reason for that is that this deflection depends upon several time-dependent factors, such as creep. We know that under constant compressive load, concrete continues to shorten. Concrete also shrinks. And then you also have uh, losses in your pre-stressing. And all of those factors need to be accounted for in the calculation of the camber values. And despite all the extensive research and elaborate empirical formulas, it is still very difficult to predict these with a high level of accuracy. However, we can say with confidence that um, generally the resulting camber and deflections are greater than deflections from permanent loads. And this is because the magnitude of the pre-stressing is determined based not only on dead loads, but also live loads. So thereby the upward deflections from camber are anticipated to be greater than the downward deflections from permanent loads, resulting still in a net upward bow of the girder. So we've now learned that in concrete girders, camber is something that we can't control accurately. You get what you get depending upon your pre-stressing and the material qualities of your batch of concrete. In contrast, with steel girders, we have excellent control over not only the, the calculation of the desired camber values, but also the ability to cost-effectively fabricate the desired camber 
within the shape of the girders during the fabrication process. Let's uh, quickly review the various components that make up the camber for steel girders. So there's three components that we'll look at. The first one being the vertical profile. This is where we would receive from the highway designers the vertical coordinates so we could achieve the final roadway profile. The second one is the load deflections that may result from permanent loads such as self-weight, weight of the concrete deck, and the superimposed dead loads such as barriers, etc. Additionally, there is deflection from deck shrinkage. And of course, this component is uh, time dependent, just like the calculations for a concrete girder. But because this is a relatively smaller component, it does not compromise the overall accuracy of the calculations. And then the last component could be any fabrication related adjustments that the fabricator actually makes within the camber to account for any shape changes during his uh, production process. These would be the three components that make up the overall camber on a steel girder. The first one, uh, the vertical profile, which is in collaboration with the highway designers. And the second one is the load deflections is what we as bridge engineers provide in our plans to the fabricator. In conclusion, just to reiterate the level of control we have over camber on steel girders, the deflection values are based on a linear elastic analysis and uh, the vertical profile calculations are also an exact science and those values can then be accurately fabricated within the girder and therefore there isn't a very heavy reliance on the haunch to achieve final geometry whereas in concrete girders it is the haunch that is relied upon significantly in order to achieve final geometry. Now one might wonder why is uh, the vertical profile not built into concrete girders? And the rationale for that is um, if you understand the manufacturing process, you've got a set of forms through which concrete girders are cast. And that would mean making a customized modification to those forms to suit a particular vertical profile, which is neither cost effective or practical. And that is the reason why profile geometries are generally never cast into the concrete girders and they're almost always cast straight in the casting bed. Thereby the haunch becoming the primary mechanism for achieving the target roadway profile. Now in case you don't have a background on bridge girder haunches, we would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and watch the video on haunches. Thank you very much.